All right, guys, so right now I'm looking at Romans chapter 8. Um, and something that God taught me personally through this teaching really helped me because I realized that I don't really understand sacrifice. My life is so comfortable that my sacrifice is just inconvenience. And so when I look at Christ's sacrifice, I really struggle to understand the weight of it. And therefore, personally, I can't claim to fully love him. Because that sacrifice was a huge way he showed us his love. And, and, and this teaching really helped me. So I thought I'd share it. And this is again where I say, listen with an open mind, but don't go straight ahead with everything I say. Because I am imperfect. And humbly I say, I don't think I can fully explain with my words the unfathomability of Christ's sacrifice. So find the meaning on your own, maybe in a new way. But I'm going to read verse 3. And I need you to listen, like actually listen and digest as I speak. It's a hard skill, but I, but I need you to practice it. Okay. God condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in flesh like ours under sin's domain and as a sin offering. Now, sin offering is where my mind was blown. <laughs> because back in the Old Testament, to allow God to save you from your sin and the death that that, that that sin produced in you, you had to take the death and cast it out on an animal in a sin offering. So basically a sin offering, in a crude way more or less, converted your recognition into God's restoration. It opened the door for a restoration. Um, and basically the recognition was that you sin constantly with and without intent, and that sin that you choose produces death in you. And so by, by taking that death and casting it out onto something under spiritual innocence, something that has no free will to choose to rebel against God, like an animal, like a sheep, you are casting that death out of you, but it has to go onto something else. Which is why Christ ultimately died, because he became the animal that we needed, the actual literal sheep. Like in scripture it sh says Jesus is the sheep. He is the lamb that was slaughtered. And I think we have become numb to that idea that, that Jesus actually humbled himself as the animal we needed. He chose to take on our death and send himself to the slaughterhouse, right? But, but I'm not quite done because you see such humility in this sacrifice in two ways. And, and this verse goes through both. The first is that this, Jesus came down and wrapped himself in our flesh, imperfect flesh, that he knew was under the influence of his enemy. So he walked into the jaws of the enemy like a slave, like a prisoner, although he wasn't, right? He, had, he, he knew he already claimed the victory, but he humbled himself. That's, that's huge. That's huge. He wrapped himself in the flesh that was under sin's domain. But the second, hu the, the second act of humility is what actually blows my mind. It's, it's this idea of Jesus becoming an animal. Not like physically a savage beast. No, he, like he, he in a way metaphorically became the animal that we needed. And he saved us by choosing the slaughterhouse. His humility went far greater than ours ever could because he chose to be an animal in that moment. He was spiritually innocent, right? But, but he still had free will. Like... It, it's crazy, and I don't want to get into theology because I don't even really know if I understand it all, so I'm not going to speak without digesting my thoughts, right? But, but Jesus wasn't an animal. He wasn't. He wasn't a literal sheep, but he chose to become like one for us. That speaks of love. Like, that, that is so much love, like those two acts of humility, but, but it speaks about the importance of humility. That humility is so necessary to show love. And for a sacrifice to be truly a sacrifice, you need to be humble. You need to humble yourself so that God might raise you up into his glory. That's crazy. But I need you to really, I encourage you to fall in love with that idea. Jesus is incredible. And in his humility, that we don't often understand or give him credit for. He saved your life. 